What's up, YouTube? Oh, man. Friday morning. Hmm. Just got the news. Dallas Cowboys, Trayvon Diggs. Let me tell you something about this young man. Cornerback um, was the position I played. You know, when I played football, high school, and, and in other places like that. Um, so I understand. You talk about the cornerback position. You have a couple of different types, right? You got the type of guys that play zone, you know, who sit on routes, who do their homework, who um, anticipate, who um, now nah, I had it, it were physical, so on, right? You got the other type of guys, man, that are just, you know, instinctual, athletic, um, can lock down one on one. You got the guys who do, do a little bit of both. I watched this kid, uh, Trayvon, right, and watching him since his rookie, uh, rookie tenure. I kind of remember him at Alabama, but I didn't really zone in on him at Alabama. Uh, when I used to watch Alabama, I kind of paid more attention to their offense. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, but this kid... Uh, really had developed himself into a special corner. And um, let me tell you something about the greatest, a lot of people don't give him, I think, the props he should get. Like some people don't put him up there with like a Jalen Ramsey or uh, Sertan and guys like that because he isn't always – in the right spot technically. It's not, his technique isn't always there. So sometimes he'll get beat. Sometimes he takes a little bit too many chances and um, gets beat. You know, so even like the year where he had, I believe, 11 interceptions, which is ridiculous, he um, was one of the guys, you know, who didn't have uh, the highest win rate, I think, against uh, wide receivers. Sometimes he would get beat at times. You know what I mean? For me, that, was, that wasn't like a knock on all because you know, you're talking about a young corner, you're talking about an aggressive corner. When you're aggressive, sometimes those things will happen, so it's a fair trade off. But of all the things that a defensive player can do at their given position, the greatest defensive play ever for a cornerback is the interception intercepting the ball to literally take the football from the other team. And then had the ability to play make after you intercept the ball. Those are the ones that the offense fears. So, um, wish that young man, uh, you know, a speedy recovery. Um, listen, I want to destroy the Dallas Cowboys. I want to embarrass the Dallas Cowboys. I want to just, like, just end their whole run every year. But not like, not in this way, you know. I don't want it to be because these guys are getting injured in practice or injured before they, now if they get injured, like like for example, if he tore an ACL because Devontae Smith put the, put the jiggy move on him and he tried and that happened, that's different. Then I'd be like, mess with that boy uh, Devontae, right? But, but in all seriousness, because it happens in practice and, so on, like you hate to hear that, because what it does is it hurts the it hurts the product of the NFL, which is the most important thing. You know that uh, we have a good product out there. I like to see the best corners go up against the best wide receivers. I like to see the best quarterbacks go up against the best linebackers and the best secondaries. You know, so I hate to hear Aaron Rodgers going down. You know, I'm not a person that's you know um, whatever makes it easier for my team to win. You know, I'm, I never had that mentality. Right? I want the Dallas Cowboys to have Micah Parsons out there. I want D-Law, trash-talking D-Law out there for sure. I don't even, I don't even call him D-Marcus Lawrence. He doesn't earn D-Law to me. I don't think he's as dominant as people think. So I do respect him against the run. Um, and then against subpar tackles. He's all right. He ain't nothing against us. Um, I want them out there. I want Vander Smash 
whatever the hell out there. Um, uh, Mazzy, Mazzy Smith out there. Um, Gilmore, Hooker, uh, Malik Hooker, who I can't stand. Because Malik Hooker is like making Fitzpatrick. Goes after people's knees on his tackles. Um, I watched him. That's what he does. He goes after, he gets low, goes after knees. I thought he damn near took A.J. Brown out the last game we played, right? Because he don't want to deal with, you know, the real physicality wrapping up. I don't like those, I don't, I don't like those type of guys who tackle like that. They're dangerous. And then going after knees, you know, you got to take that out the game. I don't like that about Malik Hooker. Um, and the other guy that got cursed and so on, I want all of those guys out there. And I want them all getting carved up by my offense, by Jalen Hurts, by Devontae, by Goddard, by, by uh, I don't want these jokers that have any excuses whatsoever, none whatsoever, you know. Um, so they got to figure it out. And then to keep it real, the Eagles, we got to hope we don't get any similar injuries, you know, because that's real, man. Like staying healthy the whole season is real. We've already had a situation where Bradbury missed a game. Um, this kid, Blankenship, who, I mean, you know, he missed a game so far. Uh, Devontae Smith, from what I'm hearing, is having a hamstring issue. Listen, if he got a hamstring issue, just sit him down until that's right. Because a lot of these trainers, they don't understand the hamstring problem. It's more of a problem because sports science trainers they're they're going to these people who don't really I mean I'm not gonna say they don't know about muscle and fitness they do but I think their technique is wrong um, what these guys like to do is stretch the hamstring you know no 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 like, listen any bodybuilder will tell you you know you can go to guys like uh, 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 Charles Glass and the other guys who know muscle no, you know, squats and so on. The reason Devontae Smith uh, may start suffering from a hamstring problem, just like a lot of guys do, is they don't work, they don't strengthen the hamstring. You should be doing squats, you should be doing deadlifts. Well, in particular, really, deadlifts, the squats really more, work the uh, thigh more. You should be doing deadlifts, you should be doing um, squat curls, right? What you want to do is you want to strengthen the muscle of the hamstring makes it harder to pull them. Um, just stretching it is like stupid. And this is the reason Chris Paul had a lot of problems. This is what Ro Robbie Anderson, this is what he was breaking down. He said that, um, you know, when you damage a hamstring, it's like on the outside. Let's say you, you get a sore on your skin or whatever. And that sore starts to heal, starts to scab up. That's what's happening internally with the hamstring. It starts to develop, you know, starts to repair itself. Before it's completely repaired, would you take and stretch a sore on the outside? All right, then you shouldn't stretch it on the inside. That's all you're doing is you're, you're, you're undoing the body's natural process of repairing, right? So what you do is you strengthen the hamstring, right? Like I bet you Jalen Hurts will probably never pull a hamstring, you know, probably never will. Because he has strong, you know, legs, you know, squats, does deadlifts, etc. You know, just wanted to add that there. Um, so I hope, uh, hope Devontae Smith, hope they do the right thing by him when it comes to that. And I don't know how their strength and conditioning people are. Um, we'll see. All right. A um, couple hours, man. I'm going to probably come back to another video. I don't need these super long videos about uh, what we're going to do Monday night against uh, Tampa Bay. I'm still kind of scouting Tampa Bay, looking at um, some of their, their previous games and tendencies and so on, uh, how Baker Mayfield looks with them. So once that's done, I probably have more to say about that. All right, peace.